Welcome in. Fired up to be with you as always. I'm your host, Jake Rima on Dolphin today. And we are discussing surprise cut candidates because I gave you some obvious ones. We know the obvious ones that are out there at the very top of that list, but we're going to dig a little deeper today. If you want to check out our first rendition of cut candidates, it's on the channel. Go ahead and do so. But when you start talking about where this Dolphins team is in terms of the projected salary cap, well, they're not in a good position. They're expected to be roughly $50 million over the cap when the new league year starts. Now, Mike Florio reported earlier this week that potentially the NFL salary cap as a whole will be going up, and that would provide a little bit more flexibility for not just the Dolphins, but every single team. So we'll keep an eye on that number as this situation progresses. But one thing's for sure, the Dolphins will have some difficult decisions to make. And given the fact that they're over, expected to be $50 million over that salary cap, I'm curious what your level of concern is with the Dolphins cap situation. Because we have a lot of free agents. We have a lot of internal free agents that we want to re-sign. We have a lot of people on the market that we want to go get. We also have to maybe restructure some guys' deals. So in general, there's a lot of work to be done when that new league year starts in March. So let me know what your level of concern is. Scale it for me, 1 through 10. Now, I've got some surprise candidates, and the very first name on the list might be the most surprising. Teron Armstead, one of the bona fide superstar left tackles in the National Football League, former All-Pro, but with Teron Armstead, the production on the field, when he's on the field, sure, makes a lot of sense, but he's been so injury-prone. And, of course, he has one of the highest paychecks on the Dolphins roster right now. And if you look at the sample size from 2023, he only played in 11 of those games. And there's a lot that go It's a team sport. So win-loss record, sure. I'm not going to pay a whole lot of attention in that, but... The Dolphins were just 6-5 and five in the 11 games that he played, and he was the 14th-ranked offensive tackle in 2023 per pro football focus. So 14th is a lot different than the all-pro level he achieved in 2018. And that's not to take anything away from Teron Armstead. Very good player. There's just a lot of layers to this conversation as it relates to potentially cutting Teron Armstead. Here's a little bit more from an article on NFL.com regarding the notion of cutting Teron Armstead. The soon-to-be 33-year-old has been a pro bowler in each of the last five seasons when he's played 10-plus games, but he's also missed 20 games due to injury since 2021. I'll add one more anecdote on my end that he has also never played a complete season in his illustrious career. So he's never played all 17 games. A little bit more from NFL.com. If released after June 1st, Armstead would free up $8.8 million in cap space in 2024 while carrying $11.4 million in dead money. For Dolphins front office, that's more than $50 million over the cap and staring down the barrel of a Tua Tungavaloa extension. Obviously, the $8.8 million in savings gets the conversation started of why Teron Armstead's name is being tossed around as a potential cut candidate for the Dolphins, and just like the title of today's video, it would surprise me if the Dolphins did elect to cut Teron Armstead, but it wouldn't be shocking, if that makes sense, because we told you there, $8.8 .8 million, it could be a business decision, but Teron Armstead is my first surprise cut candidate. Now, coming up, we'll talk about a couple of more surprise candidates, because there are more to get to as the Dolphins attempt to save some money as they're well over the cap space heading into the new league year. But first, I want to tell you about today's presenting sponsor, the only ticketing app you'll ever need because they specialize in last-minute deals and guarantee the lowest price possible. It's as easy as using an app that provides a high-resolution photo so you know exactly where you're seating and they also have a really neat feature called the all-in price, so you know exactly what you're paying. And when, don't forget about all of the easy access to the high-resolution photos so you can know where you're sitting, the flash deals, so for any fun promotions that are going on. But in summary, they specialize in last-minute ticket deals, and you can guarantee that you're getting the lowest price possible. And because we love you and we care about you here on Dolphins Today, we'll go ahead and put that link right in the comments of today's video. 
Finn's chat will get you $20 off for first-time users. Tell them Jake Rima sent you on the Dolphins Today program. It's Finn's chat, $20 off, because we love you and we care about you. We'll put that link right in the comments of today's video. It's the best ticketing app you could ever use. It's the Game Time app, and all you need to do is download that Game Time app. Terms do apply. Use the promo code FINSCHAT for $20 off. Take the stress out of buying tickets. Guarantee the lowest price possible. That is Game Time. Next on the list, Keon Crossan. And this, again, probably not as surprising because we've mentioned his name a couple of times. It wouldn't be a huge savings for the Dolphins, but we're looking at some savings because Keon Crossan did not play for Miami at all last year, and he was brought in from Houston with the hopes of helping the defense, but the injuries have just derailed his career, and unfortunately, that's life in the National Football League when you're not able to provide a level of productivity and you're costing this team that's up against the salary cap in, in a major hole, not just up against it, but in a major hole, then you're likely going to find your name on a list of cut candidates. So he did not play in 2023 following the knee injury in 2022. And if you do end up cutting Keon Crossan, you're looking at a $3.2 million worth of savings to help with that cap space situation. And again, no disrespect to Keon Crossan, but just not a guy that will be missed for this Miami Dolphins team. Sure, he's a great guy, but you know what I'm saying. And next up, this is probably going to make a lot of people happy because he seemed to be the scapegoat sometimes for the offensive line struggles. That is Liam Eichenberg, although when Connor Williams went down, Eichenberg did a great job filling in. And when there was as many injuries as there were on the offensive line, Eichenberg actually filled in relatively well, but at times he did struggle. He had one of the worst pass block win rates in the National Football League. And you look at his 2023 pro football focus grades that are a good way to evaluate offensive line play. And the run blocking grade, not good. Pass blocking grade, even worse. Overall grade, just not that great. And Eichenberg played a couple of different positions, but pro football focus has him as a center, and he was the 34th best center in the NFL. And I know centers, it's not like every team just has one center, so there's going to be more than 32 centers because there's 32 teams, there's multiple guys playing a lot of snaps, but 34th, not really a high ranking amongst pro football focus centers. So I've given you a list of players that I think should be cut, but I want to hear from you. Name a player the Dolphins should cut. We've got a lot to get into on Dolphins today, so I want to hear from you. Name a player the Dolphins should cut. Do so now down in the comments. Next up for me, this one hurts because I, I liked him during Hard Knocks, and I think he does provide a lot as far as building the locker room chemistry, the cohesiveness, but Duke Riley's play on the field, unfortunately, did not warrant him the opportunity, in my opinion, not to be cut. And it's a guy that had some opportunities with the Jerome Baker injury, but still in 17 games, not a lot of production. And he started six of those games. Now, he is a guy that plays some special teams, too, when he's not starting at the linebacker position. But overall, Duke Riley down the stretch just didn't do enough. And unfortunately, and I don't know if other people think this way, there's a couple of plays of him just falling completely short on the defensive side of things. There's that run in the wild card game where he just olayed Patrick Mahomes. There's a couple of different plays where I just look at it and say, that's not a National Football League linebacker. He can't be your starting linebacker and you expect to have a good defense. So Duke Riley, unfortunately, I think makes the list of guys that need to be cut, not to mention the Dolphins were 2-4 and four in games that he was a starting linebacker in. So looking at this inside linebacker depth chart, questions around Jerome Baker. David Long had a good season. You probably think you lose Duke Riley as the first backup to both those guys and, again, a good special teams player. But if you cut him, you're looking at over $3 million savings if you cut Duke Riley. So there's my list of players that might be surprise cut candidates. What do you think? Let me know down in the comments. Real quick to review, I think Teron Armstead is, would be the biggest surprise. I kind of expect Xavier Howard and Keon Crossman both to be cut and would be a little less surprised of Liam Eikenberger, Duke Riley. 
But I think of those two, Duke Riley, cutting Duke Riley makes a lot of sense as well. Either way, let me know what you think down in the comments. My surprise cut candidates for the Miami Dolphins.